Casey 2 i be here again with another quick video. Wanted to make a video about a little kit that I purchased that I was uh, rather interested in on eBay. And it's this um, Mini PA70 Chinese HF QRP amplifier kit. Um, 5 watts in produces approximately 70 to 80 watts of output. It's a little kit. It's about $20, amazingly. Um, and uh, it does work, but there's very little documentation on it um, and, and how to put it together. You kind of have to take your cues from the schematic. But I built it, and it doesn't come with this heat sink, but this is the kit. Um, you have to wind the transformers yourself. The, uh, the circuit board, they actually use pieces of circuit board on the ends of this in order, and you solder them to the tubes that go through the ferrite cores that make up the, this transformer. And um, you do have to do some surface mount soldering. Uh, there's a transistor and a regulator and uh, the bias adjustment. That's th a bunch of things they don't actually tell you. Um, on the eBay auction, but the unit does work. Uh, works very, very well. It's uh, meant to be used between 3.5 and 30 megahertz. It's a class AB linear amplifier, and uh, I'm gonna t I'm gonna test it out right now with my little Yaesu 817 into my uh, IFR 500A that I have on my desk. So. I'll test it on FM. Let's put this on FM. Just to give me a carrot. I can test it on AM as well. well. Let's try AM. Give myself a constant carrier. Right now I'm on the 150 watt scale, peak scale. So we'll take a look at where we get on FM. I have 5 watts going into it, so I should have 30, 40 watts coming out. So... There you go. About 35 watts of carrier coming out of this unit. And that's uh, with the 817 with uh, with about 5 watts going in. Actually, it's probably like 2.5 watts of carrier, I should say. Um, and you can see it's working. It does produce uh, the rated output. This is no by no means rated for continuous duty. These resistors get quite hot, even after a short transmission. I can touch them, but they're warm. They're pretty warm. Um, I would say not to use this on any uh, mode that uses a carrier, such as FM or AM. But uh, on sideband, it it's a solid. Uh, seems to be performing uh, solidly. So, anyway, I had some questions about the resistors. They have uh, a couple different value resistors and I didn't know where they all went. Most of them I had about 10k and I put all 10k's in and they work but I also had 1k resistors that they sent so I emailed them and they sent me this, this schematic. And all the resistors are 10k except for the R7 and uh, I kind of figured that one out on my own just before they sent me this so because uh, I wasn't getting full power out of this and I, w I thought that uh, the bias voltage was wrong um, going to the transistors so I uh, I changed that and it and it worked and then they sent me this and then I found out they 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 send the tell you the bias voltage coming out of VR1. That's the one thing they also don't tell you in the auction is that that potentiometer for some people that may not be familiar with the way these, you know, the intimate details of the way these circuits work, that that's a, that that's a bias pot for the MOSFETs that are provided with it. But it has a, uh, a PTT circuit which is active low. Um, it also has a, a fan turn on circuit. I don't think it's on here though. I think it's connected to the relay, but there is a place for a fan right there. It actually has a connector um, which I took off because I'm, I'm just going to solder the fan directly to it. 
Another nice thing they make a provision for, they make a provision for a connecting external low-pass filters. This jumper here, um, if you have this jumper in the upper position, um, it, it connects these two traces together and bypasses the, the low-pass filter in and out and connects it directly to the antenna connector. If you put this jumper in the other position, it breaks the connection and then you need to put something between these two pads for a low-pass filter in and out. And they put those pads, they constructed them just like the pads for the uh, for these uh, uh, edge-mounted SMAs. So you could put edge-mounted SMAs there as well or solder pieces of coaxial cable directly like a piece of RG316 or something like that. So, um... I haven't... I'm going to take this to Spectrum Analyzer later. I don't have that with me. It's in the car and I don't feel like dragging the whole thing out. So... But um, I'm going to see what the Spectrum looks like without a low-pass filter. And uh, if it's clean enough, I think for some QRP work out in the field... Well, <laughs> I say QRP, but uh, this I purchased this mainly just in case uh, I needed a little, extra, a little extra oomph to make a contact out in the field. So, um, so technically using this would be QRP, but... Uh, so, but it is a cool little amplifier. I I just had this this scrap heat sink. I drilled and tapped two holes. Uh, the kit does not come with the hardware to mount these units to the heat sink and to isolate them because the uh, the tab on those is the drain and the drain is connected to uh, directly to the power supply. So I suggest I got these from DigiKey. Um, it's a, uh, it's a kit. This is the DigiKey part number. And it contains a mica, a mica insulator, a screw, a plastic screw insulator, and, uh, a washer and a nut. I tapped the holes in the heat sink so the, uh, so the screws would screw right into it, so. But you have to wind, I guess, you do have to wind the, the transformers themselves. The two... The two RF transformers are not very hard to wind. Um, there's this uh, this choke they use. That's actually the power feed, um, and that keeps the RF off the uh, off the off the power feed. And it's a little hard to wind. I actually wound up as a, it was just a piece of varnished wire or enameled enameled wire, I should say. Uh, they gave you, and some of the enamel was shaved off as I'm trying to get it through this core. So, the, uh, that, uh, if you look on the schematic, is that, uh, that guy right there. So, but, fairly simple amplifier, but it's, it's effective, it works. And on the schematic, it tells you the number of turns. So, you know how many turns, like the one takes two turns of wire and the other transformer takes three turns of wire and uh, the way I actually found out what the turns were before I received this was I just looked at the pictures closely that they had on eBay and I was able to count the turns how many turns of wire they had so but um that's it it's a great little kit for a little over 20 bucks I think the shipping was free if I remember correctly for a little over 20 bucks you can build this and uh, have a little, you know, uh, 70, 75 watt amplifier with uh, 5 watts of drive. Um, this thing's gotten a bad rap by a couple of people online, mainly because of lack of information and not able to build it. But I can say that if you build this properly, uh, it does work. And whether it holds up or not, I don't know. But um, we'll see. So... It was definitely a fun little kit. I, I built it, I think, in about... Ooh, with trying to figure out what, what went where, it probably took me about two hours. That's because I was I was double-checking and triple-checking everything, so... Um, so it's uh, something that I encourage other people to experiment, experiment with. I know I will. And uh, one another thing is is that the, the, the relay, you have to bend the legs over. It's not through-hole. Nothing on this board is through-hole. So, everything you got to bend the legs over and solder directly to the board. But, that's all for now. Um, I'd like to hear if anybody else has built one of these things or had any different experience with them. So, 
uh, email me at kc2irv at gmail.com. And, uh, you know, I welcome any comments or questions. 73s.